From Transport Topics in Washington, D.C., this is Road Signs. Here is your host, Seth Clevenger. Thank you for listening to Road Signs, the podcast series from Transport Topics that explores the trends and technologies that are shaping the future of trucking. In this episode, we're going to discuss how predictive analytics is paving the way for more proactive truck maintenance. Predictive maintenance software promises to help fleets and maintenance providers make more data-driven decisions on when to replace parts and schedule repairs. But how can this truly reduce maintenance costs and improve vehicle uptime in real-world fleet maintenance operations? We'll set out to answer that question in this episode. But before we begin, I'd like to invite you to keep up to date on this topic and other important industry issues by subscribing to Transport Topics at ttn.ws slash ttsubscribe. You can also text ttsubscribe to 571-622-0001. And now, to learn more about predictive maintenance, we're going to take you back to the Technology and Maintenance Council's annual meeting in Orlando. During that show, I sat down with Kane Grau, CEO of Uptake, a provider of predictive analytics software. Let's play that interview now. We're here in Orlando at TMC's 2023 annual conference, and I'm very excited to bring in Kane Grau, CEO of Uptake. Uh, Uptake, of course, is a provider of predictive analytics software for the transportation industry. Thanks for joining us, Kane. Hey, thanks, Seth, for having me. So Uptake software is really designed to help fleet operators predict component failures, optimate, optimize their parts and maintenance strategies. So just tell us how you're using data and predictive analytics to enable this more proactive and less reactive stance on maintenance that the industry is trying to get to. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting times right now, right? With, I think, uh, lack of distribution, you know, lack of time with, you know, with a, uh, a technician shortage, lack of parts. So you, I always call it kind of like the perfect storm right now. So, you know, we're, we're sort of catching lightning in a bottle in a way that, you know, two, three years ago, predictive preventative maintenance wasn't a sort of common term, but now even being at the show, you know, I'm starting to see predictive and, and preventative in a lot more booths and the word data. But what we're really sort of homing in on, I think, is the ability to make fleet operators, uh, shops more optimal, get drivers safe, reliable vehicles. Um, but I think the most important thing is how can we make the shop more efficient and being proactive in looking ahead and saying, hey, this part of your fleet may have an issue. What types of parts are going to be needed? How many tech hours are going to be needed? I mean, that's really what we're aspiring to be. Yeah, and you know, to your point, you know, I, I do hear the mentions of you know, predictive analytics you know, more and more uh, over the years, and it really has become a, a, a key topic in the world of fleet maintenance. Uh, maybe just give us a few more examples of how that can really translate to, to maintenance cost savings and more efficient operations in the real world. Yeah, I mean, on average, I think we're we're saving, a, a, you know, fleet operator about twenty four hundred dollars a truck um, per year, and and it's, it's so it's it's pretty significant. Uh, and you know, a, a lot of examples. It, and look, like you said, and I think it's and it's perfectly well stated. This isn't this hasn't been hasn't been done for fifteen years in commonplace in a lot of shops. Even convincing a driver to get a truck in um, takes takes some work, right? Sure. Um, but I think what we're doing with our software is really pinpointing not just the problem, but looking at a collection of data over many months, sometimes many years, depending on you know how the truck has been driven, what is in our database, what is in our libraries, what's you know the the, the models that we have. Um, it's a big reason, you know, tied to the time, tied to our, our relationship with Daimler. But how can we use all that data, and how can we give an insight to the operator in a convincing form that they can call the driver and say, you know, with real evidence, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. I always love using the ADT example, or you know, any security system you have at your house. You might get that alert that says, hey, you have a low battery on the window, um, and, you know, yes, you, you, you want to change it, but you don't have to change it today. Somebody's breaking in your front door, and you're getting the phone call, you're going to take it, and you're going to react to it. Right. That's exactly the way we look at our insights, is we can categorize it in a way that says, hey, this is upcoming, you might want to keep an eye on it, this is a problem, and your driver is going to have a breakdown within this period of time, 
this truck needs to be repaired. Yeah, and, un and understanding the difference between the two, right? This is urgent, this is something that's a maintenance item that you should pay attention to at some point. And that's what we spent really, like, and I always say it, we've done a lot of hard work over eight years. We've put millions and millions of dollars of capital behind real science, right? Like real science. And so, you know, I, I think that the level of precision a couple percentage points of precision really matters because that could be the difference of the driver believing whether there is right. an issue to get the truck in or not. Yeah, and speaking of that, where are we today in terms of precision and analyzing, okay, when is a part likely to fail? Uh, how often should it be replaced? You know, just how accurate is that today with the data that is currently available? I would say greater than 80% on average. I think we can get, you know, there's some things that are pretty, um, that we've been just doing for so long that I could say we can get into the high 80s, real low 90s. Um, nothing's perfect, but on an average, we're over 80 percent. Okay, so this is a you know, really good information about you know when you know just planning, you know, uh, parts replacements, maintenance cycles, and and really understanding you know the, the state of your equipment. Even survivability curves, you know, going out, you know, uh, that's with really our work order analytics suite of products, um, really now being able to give shop owners a forward looking view of, you know, where could this fleet, you know, where could my fleet be within a year? What does, you know, my downtime analytics look like? What are my costs gonna look like? Um, that's really what we're aspiring to do is be the, a, a much more forward thinking, uh, have forward thinking views versus the reactive view. And uh, you, you earlier mentioned your uh, data agreement with Daimler Truck. That's a new development, of course. It's a, uh, a way to, to gather this information uh, to support predictive maintenance. So just tell us a little bit more about how that partnership is going to help your joint customers with Daimler. So fleets that are running Freightliners, Western Stars, and, and how you know, that, that uh, data sharing agreement is going to strengthen uh, what you're able to do on the predictive maintenance side. Yeah. I'm. I'm as you can, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about this uh, announcement for a lot of reasons. One is, you know, helping the common customer, right? The, the data they pass us is, you know, straight from the truck. You don't get any better than that. Um, so taking our science, complementing it, complementing it with uh, the data straight from the OEM, uh, that will be the richest data set that we can give to the end to the end user. More importantly, is working directly with Daimler and their subject matter experts on when we get, uh, and when we fire an insight, can we go back to that sub sub subject matter expert that actually created the fault code mm -hmm. and say to Daimler, oh, here's, here's more data, here's more data to their, to their engineers to figure out, could we be doing anything differently when we're engineering the next iteration of the truck? So the data sharing both ways is going to provide, I think, greater reliability, long-term, greater reliability, a safe, potentially a safer truck, which is what we all want, yeah. right? Like, and we want drivers to be happy. Hello, Roadside listeners. Dan Ronan here from Transport Topics. I'm here to tell you about our new extended cuts of the Road Signs podcast. If you like what you learn here, I think you're going to really love this. So what is the Road Signs extended cut? Well, instead of ending the recording and saying our guest farewells, we're keeping our expert guests around for an extra one or two questions to gather a deeper, fuller picture of the influential topics in transportation. We capture that insight and convert it into a printable download that will help you navigate the latest trucking trends and guide your next business decision. Considering the easy, linkable, and printable format, you can keep the extended cut for your next big meeting, send it to your friends and colleagues, or pack it up for your next big conference. So how do you get the latest download? Well, it's real simple. Visit ttn.ws forward slash extended cut. That's ttn.ws forward slash extended cut. You know, just looking at modern trucks in general, you know, we've seen uh, just you know the number of sensors and, and just connected devices and components on trucks really has just expanded over the years, uh, and all that data is potentially valuable, especially to a company like Uptake. But uh, just tell us a little bit more about how you translate all that information, and it can be an overwhelming amount of information into really actionable insights, information that a fleet manager needs to know 
uh, that they need to act upon so they're not drowning in a sea of data, but they're using the data to really improve their operations. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, so we have 65 total models deployed in the application today, and, and we're trying to build it really around the thinking of how does the operator got to work his day or her day? Um, and so how can we make the application um, as user-friendly, exactly like you said, and you said it very well of, be able to cut through the noise, get to what, you know, if I have a, if I have a fleet of 500 trucks, what are the 10 things that I need to get done today that are the most important? And there's a lot of data that could be overwhelming, but if you could say to the, to the operator, these 10 things are the most important um, for you know, safety, for potentially driver retention because the driver needs you know, to keep that truck up and running, um, for shop operation efficiency, um, maybe it's parts ordering uh, ahead of time. Those are the things, and, and you're, you're exactly right, is there, there are millions of data points that are coming into that system, but how could you ultimately take those million and just say these are the 10 things that are the most important? Yeah. And that's really what we've been really homing the application around is really trying to make the operation as efficient and as easy, e as easy to operate as possible, and if they have to communicate outbound to the driver, what is in front of them that is empirical evidence to say you have to get this truck in yeah. to the shop. Sure. You know, and I believe I believe long term uptake has a a role in providing evidence to the driver. This doesn't exist today, but I aspire to even give a shop owner or a fleet operator evidence to the driver that says if if you continue to operate the truck in this manner, this is where your truck will break down, literally to a mile, yeah. to show them how far they could be from the next repair shop, yeah. how much towing would cost, how much brand illusion would cost yeah. the fleet, how you know the, the goods potentially expiring on the truck, or the goods not getting to the final destination. Um, that entire story has to be told by somebody. Right. I don't necessarily think the fleet's going to develop that story. I think we have a role in developing that story. No, that's really fascinating and, and really brings it home, you know, the, the impact of a decision the driver makes and, you know, really giving the, them the information they need to, to make the right choice. Yeah. You know, while I have you here, Kane, I think it would be interesting to talk to, uh, you know, speak to some of the broader industry issues that we're seeing and, you know, since we're here at TMC, uh, there's always conversation about you know technicians, the technician shortage, uh, labor shortages in, in our industry, and uh, part of the, the change we see happening in the industry uh, is this influx of technology. You know, this move toward more data-driven processes. Uh, do you think that that could actually help the industry's efforts to recruit and retain that next generation of technicians that we're all looking for, and so many companies are? looking to hire and, and, and attract into our industry? Is there a role for technology there? A thousand percent. Um, look, it's, this is a, I, I think this should be top of mind. Um, I think skilled labor, the, this, the gap that we're going to be facing over the next five years in skilled labor in general, not just diesel technicians, plumbers, electricians, yeah. car technicians, it's going to be unprecedented, drivers for trucks. And we're not doing enough, I believe, to to fill that void right now. But let's let's stay on the let's stay on the topic of just diesel techs. I believe that yes, a absolutely, technology um, can can help. But what we got to look at, and, and again, I think uptake has a role in this. Is let's call it the creation um, or the redesign of the technician into a virtual technician, mm -hmm. right? So the person that has that 25 years of working on inside the truck, on the engine, on the transmission, all the above. Imagine them being in front of a computer screen now and being sort of like the truck whisperer. And that is the person is working on the other end to say, I'm looking at the issue of your truck. And with that confidence and with that expertise to be able to say, this is what's going to happen with your truck. Like, I see that role. That role will become commonplace here in the, in the next 24 yeah. months. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and really more tools yeah. like uptake um, and more uh, evidence of um, uh, in the usage of data, these roles will transform. You're still going to need people on the, on the shop floor fixing trucks. That's not going away. Right. But you're going to have to complement that with people also that have really deep experience repairing a truck that's in front of a computer monitor, kind of doing a dual, a dual role or potentially a sole yeah. role. 
No, it would be really fascinating to watch how uh, maintenance operations evolve in the years ahead, you know, using technology and also uh, creating jobs that are maybe a, a, a good fit for that next generation of, of workers. Look, we need more schools. We need more training. Um, you know, a shout out to, you know, even diesel laptops. Um, we spend a lot of time with them. They're a great partner. I love what they're doing in, in diesel training. Um, they, they are in the, definitely on the forefront of, uh, with training. And, but we need, we need 100 more of those to fill, I think, what, what is going to be this massive void here soon. Yeah. You know, another topic I wanted to, to bring up with you is you know, the, just all the supply chain disruptions we've seen uh, in recent years, you know, kind of coming out of COVID. Uh, of course, manufacturers and, and fleet maintenance providers have been encountering part shortages, you know, in, here and there. And uh, whether you're you're building a, a vehicle, a truck, or a trailer, or if you're you know, just looking for parts for you know replacement parts in the aftermarket, uh, have you gotten the sense that just the cost and availability of parts has become a bigger bigger consideration for truck maintenance operations? You know, not just you know fixing the trucks and, and staying on top of problems, but you know being smart about how you're uh, you know, using your, your available parts. Without a doubt, right? I mean, think of the world. We have we have a lack of distribution, so therefore fleets are holding on to trucks longer. I think would they go from, on the average, four years to 6.6 .6 years. Um, shop um, costs are up 18%. Uh, there's, yes, there there is a, uh, that is absolutely front and center of, I would say, everybody that I talk to, all of our customers, that is front and center. I got to keep the truck longer. Uh, my technicians are overwhelmed. I've got 10% of my fleet in the shop. So, yeah, so that to me is where I believe we're, when we're, when we're looking at product and we're looking at the advancement of our product, it is to really give that decision maker in the shop to say, these would ideally be the parts you're going to need have these parts on hand and give them way more lead time because you can't get a part in a day like you could right. pre-COVID. But if you knew that you could get a part in a month and you knew it was high likelihood that part's gonna be utilized on three to four trucks or 10 trucks or 100 trucks and you can proactively get those parts in the shop. I mean, that is really the power of work order analytics. You know, before I let you go, Kane, you know, I'm curious to hear your perspective on the future of truck maintenance, right? You know, Just kind of look out maybe uh, uh, a decade down the line, how do you see maintenance operations and data analytics evolving in our industry in the future? I don't think it'll take 10 years. My my idea would be this, and, and, and this is my North Star, is in two years, and I would love to be able to, to be the architect in front of this, is uptake can be the, we can fire the insight, but could the insight automatically just start looking downstream to say, is it is a tech available? Is the part available? Is the bay available? Is the truck available to get into the shop? And could I take what could be maybe two days of downtime to two hours, yeah. right? That is what we have to do as an industry. Somebody has to architect that connectivity tissue. It's not good enough that we're five disparate solutions and causing that kind of unnecessary downtime for a fleet or a driver. Yeah. And so if a driver could literally just, it could be that prescriptive and the insight could literally, the insight could start the process, but from there, everything was automated. Like that to me is the, that, that's the North Star that we're, that I want to drive to. Yeah, anything that uh, the industry can do to, to reduce downtime is, you know, just helps resolve so many pain points in the industry. And you know, we've seen the manufacturers, uh, you know, component suppliers, dealers, uh, technology vendors all kind of working on this this problem. So it will be, you know, I think really interesting to see that. Hopefully that will come together in, yeah. in the coming years. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I think this is a good stopping point, uh, but it's been a great conversation. It's been great to have you on the podcast. Really appreciate you stopping by and, and sharing your insights. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Did you know you can ask Alexa to open transport topics? In just one minute, you will hear the biggest trucking headlines of that day. Be prepared and start your morning off right with Transport Topics. Before we close, let's take a moment to revisit our original question. How can predictive maintenance software reduce maintenance costs and improve vehicle uptime in real-world fleet operations? As we've heard during this episode, the ever-growing amount of data captured by modern trucks and their components is a goldmine of business intelligence. By analyzing this information, Maintenance software is becoming increasingly capable of predicting component failures before they occur, 
rather than merely reporting fault codes and maintenance problems as they happen or after the fact. Over time, expect data analytics in the fleet maintenance sector to become increasingly predictive and even prescriptive, enabling fleets and maintenance providers to further improve their parts and maintenance strategies. If you've enjoyed this episode of Road Signs, please let others know. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If my questions have sparked questions of your own, share them with me and the Road Signs team. You can email us at share at ttnews.com. We'll read them and respond daily. And of course, let us know how we did by texting TT Survey to 571 622 0001. And of course, we'll be back soon with a fresh episode of Road Signs. Until then, I'm Seth Clevenger. Thank you for listening.